welcome to my talk about one tool of the open source uh, movement that uh, I can say really saved my life once. About me, I don't want to bore you with my career uh, development. Uh, just We just found out outside in the discussion at lunchtime that I'm probably one of the oldest people here at the conference. So I guess I collected some life experience and I want to share a few insights with you and want to show you a tool that maybe helps you to have a better life. So what are the goals of this talk? I want to make you curious about org mode. I don't want to uh, show you everything because that would take much too long. But uh, you should see some basics. You should get really curious about it. You should e even eager to try it out. And let's say like this, we, we want to address one problem. That is the problem. People everywhere and everyone, I can bet, they are all stressed because they have too much to do. This is a typical desk of an office worker that says, oh, I have this project, I have that project, somewhere there's a telephone ringing, I at least I have a cup of coffee, I have a lot of books piled up, but I really have no idea what I am committed to, what I forgot about, and so on. So people get stressed. And there's a solution to get out of that stress. The solution is you have to get yourself organized. So our goal or the, the idea behind is that you install a trusted system. Trusted system is a term that was used by David Allen. That's one of the self-management gurus around. He wrote a book, Getting Things Done. And his uh, basic concept is your brain is there to have ideas, not to hold them. So you should have ideas, but then you should put them in a trusted system, and then you can forget about them, because you don't have to spend mental energy to remember that you have to do that and that and that and that, and that you have to think about whatever. You just put it in your system, and it's there. A system could be simply a paper notebook. David is not uh, specific on saying you have to use that tool or that tool or whatever tool. He can, says you can use a paper notebook, you can even use post-it uh, stickers, you can use whatever. But I found out in my life that the best tool I ever found for organizing my life was org mode. There are a lot of other shiny new things around that have a, a great GUI and so on. And, uh, but org mode still wins all uh, competitions. So you wonder, what is org mode? Does anybody already have heard about org mode? Ah, one, one person, okay. For the others, org mode is an extension to the IMAX text editor. So, ha. Huh. When I tell you, look, I'm, I'm uh, managing my life in a text editor, you will say, what the fuck is he doing? How can he manage his life in a text editor? <coughs> and honestly, I know a lot of people thought about it. I'm very active in that uh, self-management bubble because I like it a lot. And as I told you, it saved my life because some 12 years ago, it was Christmas 2010. My wife got diagnosed with cancer. That was really a threat to her life. She survived. But for me, that meant, okay, suddenly your life is turned upside down. You have two small kids. My kids were 10 and 8 at this time. You have a dog to take care of. You have a house to take care of. You have to take your wife to therapy three times a week. And you should work, and you should do the other important things. The, the, the life is still going on, even if there is a crisis. So without a trusted system that is, has already all the important things for my life inside it, I would have gone crazy. I would probably be getting a nervous breakdown and ended up in some hospital, whatever. But with a trusted system, I was okay. I have additional stress. 
but I can sort out what is really important at the moment and what can I postpone for later or whatever. But okay, let's come to the disadvantages first of org mode. You see the red line? That is the learning curve when you want to learn about org mode. If you have the, the org mode website and you look at the reference material, then you, you get uh, practically the red line. The handbook is really reference. That means if you know what exists, you can look up how to use it. But if you have no idea that it exists, you will never find out. So in 2016, I was discussing about this uh, on um, LinkedIn with some fellow people from the Getting Things Done uh, group, and I tried to tell, tell, tell them how is my system working, because they always ask, how can you do managing your life in a text editor? And then I said, okay, let me just record a small video, and I show them, and I recorded the video with Open Broadcast Studio screen uh, sharing, and that was, I guess, 25 minutes of, of a video. Then I looked at it, and I thought, oh my god, nobody will ever understand what this is about. And then I said, okay, I can do better. I'm a sort of a perfectionist in that way. And I started to, to do the videos again. And I said, okay, let me make a tutorial out of it, step by step from the basic steps to the more advanced steps. So at the end, we had a flat line, you know, flattened the curve that it was very popular now in the pandemic, but I used it before. And I put the, all the videos on YouTube and uh, Fun fact is, with all the videos on YouTube, today my YouTube channel has 4,000, I just checked before, 4,249 subscribers. They are all interested in org mode. I got a lot of comments and I got, I have even seen uh, posts on Reddit about it that said, hey, Ryder is a legend. But I don't want to be a legend, I just want to make people's life easier. Okay, this, those were the disadvantages. Now let's look at the advantages. What is one advantage? We have plain text. Plain text uh, sounds crazy, but on the other hand, just imagine. You have some whatever task manager, let's, let's call it Google task, let's take Outlook, whatever you have. Uh, you have a file and you have no idea about the contents of the file. And the thing is, when you use software, Usually, uh, firms that provide software, they are happy when you join their user community, but they are not so much happy when you leave them. So if you put your data, your tasks in a task manager, like let's say Outlook, whatever, then you have the problem that when you want to move away, you will find out, oh, exporting of my stuff is not that easy. I will get maybe some CSV files, but uh, that's it. It's, it's not that good. On the other hand, with org mode, with plain text, I can even use that when there is no IMAX around someday. But I doubt that there is no IMAX around because IMAX is also open source. There will always be somebody that maintains this tool, so it will be there. And I can tell you, I have seen, when I was on LinkedIn, in the LinkedIn group, I, I saw a company that uh, offered a personal task manager that was called iQtel. That was really a nice tool. I tried it out, it was a web-based tool, and it had a, a nice app for Android and for iOS. And it had a lot of, of functions that you say, hey, that's great. But some two years later, they made an announcement that said, oh, look, we are sorry, but our business plan didn't work out, so you should look for something else. We help you a bit with exporting, but there you are. The, the, the firm discontinues the service, and now what are you doing? The next big advantage of org mode is you have the files under your control. They are on your computer or maybe on a network drive or whatever, but it's your file, your control. And that is the, the important thing, because I remember when I was very young, and there was no org mode yet, I had a BlackBerry uh, smartphone, and I used to have a app that was called, I guess, To Do Matrix, whatever. Was nice, was uh, helping me to manage my task. 
And then that was the time when roaming in uh, foreign countries was still expensive. And I went down to Italy to visit my father in law for two weeks. No problem, I said, I don't need my, my to-do list in Italy. And when I came back, I was happy to see, now let me see what I have to do. And there were no to-do lists anymore. We came back on, on Saturday and they said, where well, are my lists gone? And I had to mail to the firm on Monday and say, my lists disappeared. No, that, that was a problem. We reinstalled the, the backup. But I was there with one day without lists and I was really nervous. Have they thrown it completely away? Is there a backup or whatever? So when you have the files under your own control, it's better. The other thing is it's, it's very flexible and customizable. So when you have other uh, personal managers, they have some limitations, maybe, whatever it is. Let, let's just think of a, of a, a tool like, like Google uh, Tasks or Outlook that says, OK, you can write a task, do whatever. And uh, we all know if the task gets too big, and that happens often, you should split up the task into a bunch of subtasks. You should declare that the original task as a project and say, OK, I have split that up into small tasks that I can manage easier. But what do you do if your tool doesn't provide that? That's like you the only tool you have around is a hammer. So every problem has to turn into a nail. But if you have a tool that is fully customizable, that you say, OK, whatever it is, whatever idea I have, I just need to install maybe some lines of Lisp code, maybe try something out. But at the end, I can adapt the tool to my needs. And I don't need to adapt to the requirements of the tool. That's the big difference. I can model my workflows and my ideas that I have and use the tool to do that instead of a tool that is forcing me to do it in a way that I don't like. And of course, org mode is fast. I usually have always an IMAX window open, and if I have an idea and want to capture it, it's just a matter of few key presses. So at this point, I have to tell you another important thing. When we do a personal management system, the goal, I mean, the goal of the, the talk here is that I want to make you curious. If you install a personal management system, the goal of doing this is not, I remember, I repeat, not that you say, oh, I have a personal management system now, yeah, and now I can do 15 tasks a day instead of 10. That's not the goal. The goal is that you do the right tasks. And the goal is that you start to think about what matters to you and that you can focus on the things that matter to you. Because, I mean, we are human beings, and we all want to live a meaningful life, I hope, that there is nobody around that says, I don't care what happens to me. Everybody has some small goals, some big goals, and so on. And if you want to manage them, you should have a system that helps you to remember your goals and helps you to remember your tasks, and so on. But it's not the purpose of the goal that to, to enable you to do more, it needs to enable you to do the right things, to focus on what really matters to you in the moment. So when you start doing that, the first job is do a brain dump. This is a screenshot from Orgmo that just brought down some things that come to my mind. Completely like brainstorming, I don't sort it out at the moment, I just write it down and say, yeah, this is... I want to do taxes. Uh, it's not what I want to do, of course. Uh, taxes is some of the really um, tasks that everybody wants to do. Not. I delegated that to my tox layer, but uh, anyway, I have to bring in the papers. So even for me, doing the taxes is a small work. Renovate the dining room. This is also maybe category, if, if you categorize that, it says, OK, I maybe it's not a must do, but my wife insists to do it, so it's a should do. We should do this, but we are not yet convinced, whatever. Bring the car to the service is the same. It's, it's not mandatory, maybe, but uh, you 
you can think about it, if I don't do it, uh, sooner or later the car will break because something uh, that is, uh, how to say, worn out and needs to be replaced didn't get replaced and so the damage will be even bigger if you don't do it, so it's better to have that thing done. So we have uh, three categories of tasks. We have the things we must do by law or by requirements. We have things that we should do to avoid damages or to avoid problems. And of course, there are things that I want to do. And that's, that's the important thing. You have to put the things that you want to do in your task manager as well. Because if I put the things there that I only must do and I should do, then you have, a, let's say, assistant that's really painting in your ass and says, you have to do your taxes, you must do that, you should do that. And nobody wants to consult such an assistant because he says, oh, this is only stress. It reminds me of all the, the ugly things I have to do. But if you put in the things you really love to do, like I read a book, or in my case, I play the guitar, I play the bass, I play the piano, whatever. If you have tasks that really reflect what you love to do, what you want to do, then it's not no longer a, a driver that, that says you have to, you must. It's somebody that reminds you, look, today you have to do a few things. That some of them are ugly, but hey, there's also read the book or play the piano or whatever. So you are much more motivated to use the trusted system instead of if it only contains uh, things that you must do. So after we have put this in, we, you see we have always a star in front of the lines. Those are headlines in org mode uh, nomenclature and uh, that means we can uh, juggle them around. When, when you have made your brain dump, you could say, okay, let me organize that a bit. So now I organize the same things, I just moved them up and down and I made uh, new headlines that I said I have some duties like doing the taxes and so, so I indented the tasks one way to the right and said, okay, this is duties, this is household things, and this is leisure, what I want to do. And on the other hand, on the right side, you see things uh, between columns, those are called tags. So you can classify what you are doing there. You can say, okay, doing the taxes is about m uh, money. Doing uh, the car and the service is about maintenance. Paying bills is money again. And household things, uh, cleaning the windows is house and so on. So at this point, we already have a great outline of what we want to do. Of course, you can always go into those topics where the headlines are and write additional text. When you press the tab button, it will collapse or expand. What you have also in there are checklists. So when I do the taxes, my checklist is okay. I need my tax documents from the employer. In German, that's called Lohnsteuerkarte. I need to collect the bills for all my work-related expenses. So when I buy whatever, a new chair, or I can put it there. And if I donate to some uh, social funds and so on, I get receipts, so I collect the receipts. At the end, when all is crossed off, I have a package of papers. I can put it to the tax layer and say, have fun, and I'm fine. So checklists are, are quite easy, and you see there's a progress indicator after doing the taxes that says one out of three points on your checklist is already crossed off. So at <laughs> We are here now. Let's assign some to-do keywords to that. So I can say, okay, to-do, doing the taxes means I have to do something, but I'm still not in the uh, position to do it immediately. Maybe I need some uh, receipt from a donation that comes per mail and is not yet here or whatever. And uh, if I have a next job, that means I can do it immediately. Paying the bills, okay. I should have the money on my bank account, but uh, at the end I just can go online banking and do it. So we have things like next to do's. I made uh, out of this a sort of state machine. I said I also want to have a task state that is waiting. That means I order some replacement part for my bike or whatever. 
that the big overall task is repair the bike, and it starts with order the replacement part, and then I put the task to waiting. And uh, then I know I'm waiting here for something to happen before I can go on. I even have delegated, so delegation would mean, oh yeah, I could uh, tell my daughter, come on, you have to do the laundry or whatever, but okay, that uh, collides with the laziness of my daughter. But that's not part of this talk. You also have uh, one thing that the first one is repeating tasks, because we have repeating tasks. Things like maintenance, I have one repeating task in household things, that's cleaning the dishwasher. Everybody has a dishwasher, everybody uses it, but uh, only little people know that uh, all quarter year you should in a run a box of machine cleaner through it, otherwise it gets cloggy and then you need a service technician and you have to pay a lot of money for cleaning that or replacing parts. So it's quite easier and, and more not so much expensive, ch quite cheaper to say, okay, remind me every uh, 12 weeks that I should apply the machine cleaner here. And of course, we can do projects. We can say, okay, my, my planning the summer holidays, I transformed the thing into a project and said, okay, let me put some subtasks there, level, level three. First uh, thing is we have to decide about where we want to go. We should book a hotel, we should book a flight, whatever. It's all there. And, of course, you say, now I have a great list, but now uh, when am I doing this? The when is you can schedule tasks. Org mode uh, knows two type of uh, text. The one is scheduled and one is deadline. The scheduled means this is the date when I want to start doing this. So it could be that I say I have something in mind that I schedule for whatever. For example, in our company, the SUSE moved to Frankenstraße, and of May we got a mail that said you have to uh, adjust your footer in the mails to the new address, but we tell you when it's uh, time to do this. So, so now I put a task in my system that says adjust the footer in my mail and I just said schedule now for next Tuesday when I come back to work I hope the, the mail that says now do it is there and everything is fine. If you have a deadline, deadline means uh, on one hand it has to be done by that time. The other thing is a deadline helps you because deadlines will show up in advance. We see soon well they will show up so you can say I uh, have a deadline on for the taxes on um, May 31st and I can adjust that they say one week before, so May 22nd or uh, 24th. Uh, the thing is start to bug me about, hey, you have to do the taxes, you have to do the taxes, so I don't forget about it. Or if I have something like uh, clean something or replace my... Uh, toothbrush or whatever, a deadline is nice because it reminds me that this is due soon and I can check, hey, do I have this replacement part or not? And if I don't have it, I can put it on my shopping list and I have it when it's due. We also have repeated things. So I told you about the dishwasher cleaning. This is just a, a scheduled timestamp that says, okay, plus 12 weeks. That means every 12 weeks, let me do it. So when you do the uh, task and you say this task is done now, Orgmod will take the date here and say, okay, let me add 12 weeks and reschedule it. So you will be frequently reminded that there is something to do. Of course, this is uh, a big file and you say, oh, oh my God, how does it help me to know what I have to do today? So for that, we have agenda views. Agenda views, I, I take all the the stack in your, let's call it backlog, and there's not only one backlog file that you can have, you can have several ones. For my uh, case, I have one for the private stuff, I have one for the work stuff, and since I'm the president of a shooting club and I have to do voluntary work and admin stuff and so on, I have a third backlog that's just for those stuff. And the agenda view, you can say, okay, go to through all those files, and pick out that what is important for me now. So for example, 
we have an agenda view that was done in the beginning of May that shows you right there what is to be done in this week. So you see on Wednesday, May 4, it says, hey, you scheduled clean the dishwasher for today. And on May 5, uh, it says, yeah, you scheduled to do, do the taxes, do it, and so on. So when you have uh, your schedule, to I mean, in my, my real life system, when I do the agenda, I have a screen full of, you have to schedule this for today, and so on. But agenda is, I limit the view to the things that are important now. And of course, this is an agenda based on uh, date. I, I have this week working with AI18, let me show what's to be done in this week. You can also base the agenda on to-do with uh, keywords. So when I want to, to know what is all the things that I marked with next, I just have to tell them, show me all next tasks. And then I get the list, pay bills, clean the windows, read Lord of the Rings, exercise, piano, whatever. Quite easy. And you can also use the text that you have defined for tasks to get an agenda view for that. So in this case, you see on the right side on maintenance, there is that cursor box. That means I clicked on maintenance and it opened an agenda view that says I show you everything that has to take maintenance. So I know all the maintenance jobs that I have to do. In your backlog, you have the possibility to have drawers. A drawer is uh, like a drawer in your cupboard. You can put text in there, you can put notes in there. And if you put your cursor on that logbook line and press tab, the drawer will close, so you just see the line with logbook. If you press tab again, it will open and you see everything that you wrote down. And the good thing with this is, you have a sort of micro block for every task that you are doing. And that means uh, you can write down progress that you have. You can write down what's, what's happening. Maybe there are the, uh, even uh, the possibility that status changes. Let's uh, say my um, bike repair project. I'm, I'm ordering a replacement part I put in a status change from to do to waiting and it will ask me why are you waiting now and I can type in a comment I ordered the part and then I will get a note like this one note taken on this day with this timestamp and this was my note and when the part arrives I go back to now I can work on it that the part is here I can change the status of the job to next it asks me again why are you changing it to next and I can say okay I got the part delivered, let me repair the bike. And this is really helpful depending on where you work. I was in a company where sometimes people try to blame things on you because they said he's not doing his job. He uh, procrastinated, he was forgetting about this. And I had the uh, notes that said, okay, look, I had. Uh, done my job, I asked whatever product management or I asked uh, the customer if he's satisfied with the solution and nothing came back. I asked again two weeks later, even nothing came back. So don't blame it on me, I'm innocent. There is another type of drawer that is called properties. That's a system drawer, that means uh, system stuff is going there. And here you see a unique ID, like the UUIDs that we know from everywhere. And the good thing is you can link tasks together with that unique ID. So you can, in my case, that means I have my daily agenda and I pick tasks from there and I put it in the daily plan where I link to the, to the tasks. So I have just a checklist, a small one that is not overwhelming and not making me nervous where I say today I want to do this and this and this. This is reasonable because of course we can say, okay, uh, 
let me be honest, I, tonight I schedule for my next week and I would say next week, first day, I want to do whatever, clean the, the, the or, or renovate the kitchen. And then maybe on, on Tuesday I get sick or whatever happens and on Thursday morning I say, okay, no way, no way, I'm, I have not the energy to do it. So I have my daily plan that reflects really my mood in the morning that says, this is achievable today, and the rest, okay, I know I should do it, but uh, it's of no use to try it even. So, you see, we have a, a great backlog, but sooner or later, we will be lucky and we will have completed the task. So in this case, you see, uh, I was able to finish Lord of the Rings, yeah, great. I mark the task as done. When it's done, it's no longer red, it's green. To show me, yeah, this is a task that is done. That is great, but um, I don't want to have this done task any longer in my backlog because it's done. What, what shall I do without it? So you can archive it. When you want to archive it, you place the cursor here and you say, okay, archive this task. When I do that, you see, down there it wrote subtree archived in file my archive org. My archive org is declared as a property above for the leisure stuff. I have my archive org, leisure, and the task is no longer in my backlog. But if I visit my archive file, you see, there is the task. And the task shows me what time did I archive it, where does it come from, from which path does it come, and so on. So if I archive something accidentally, I can put it back to the original file. And on the other hand, here I have a great backlog of things of uh, uh, archive what, what I did. For example, I organize my, my book reading list with this, uh, so whenever I finish the book, it uh, get gets to the track uh, read books list, and then I can see, okay, I was doing this. I can even, when I, when I put the book to done, it asks me, how did you like the book? I can write a small words if it was good, if it was bad, if it I could recommend it, and so on. And at the end, I have a long list of all the books I've read. That's really great. What's important when you have such a system? I mean, uh, th this is a machinery, really. And uh, every, every engine that you have, it needs to be maintained. And David Allen says you maintaining means uh, we do a weekly review. Weekly review means, first of all, get inbox zero. Have as little inbox stuff that it as possible. I remember one incident in my job, uh, I had ask a product manager for some details by mail and he didn't respond. And after a week I said, okay, let me go down. I always like to do some walks in the office and visit him. He's just uh, three floors down and in another building. But anyway, I, I do the walk and I go to his desk and say, hey, I wrote you a mail last week. What's about that? Ah, let me see. He opened his Outlook inbox and I saw, I guess, 1,500 whatever mails. And I said, oh my God. No wonder that he didn't remember this mail because it was completely messed up. So usually you should go through your inboxes, say, okay, let me see what I have here. Is it actionable? Does it, uh, is it something for me to do? If yes, I create a task. If not, throw it away. You can also review your backlogs to say what, what tasks are no longer relevant, what tasks are already done somehow and so on, and mark them. And of course, you can always capture new ideas. What's also in there, I mean, this was now just a, a really fast track. We have custom agenda view, so I can show you uh, really what I want to see. I have a customer agenda view that says, show me all finished job, no matter where they are, or show me all phone calls I want to make, or show me uh, all tasks that I always postpone because I'm lazy as well. And uh, if it comes to doing the taxes, I say, oh, no, 
not today, let's postpone it to next week. And I have made a function that uh, counts the number of postponing. And if it reaches 10, then I have an agenda view that tells me, look, this task is starting to smell because you always postpone it. Uh, you can have capture templates. That means you can capture things by just pressing one or two buttons. And there's a template that then can ask you, OK, you want to do this task. What is your desired outcome? What, what should come out of this task? And you can write down a timestamp that there's, OK, this task was captured on this date at this time, and so on. You can create forms with checklists. When I have something uh, frequently occurring, I mean, in my job now, uh, so we, we often have to do build reviews. That means do this, do that, do that, do that. I have made a small checklist, and if it's build review, I just say, OK, I have to do a build review. It asks me which build number. I type in the four numbers. And then I have a task with all the checklists to be done. Easy like that. You can write journals, so, so things that happen to you without being connected to a task. Can you can write it in a, in a journal that is sorted by date and time. You can have time accounting. So when you do work on tasks, you can start timers that say, OK, now measure how long am I working on this task. You can have a countdown timer. I don't know if you know Pomodoro technique. That's that small tomato timer that people use in the kitchen. And usually they say, OK, 25 minutes. And then it rings, and uh, I can make a break. For me, this is really important. When I do my weekly review, I have a checklist. And I have a point that says, OK, now lay back for five minutes and think what you could capture. What are, what are your new ideas? And after five minutes, Orgmund says, OK, five minutes are over, go on. You can have links, attachments to other files, everything. Lot, lots of stuff. And then we have to divert a bit, because some two years ago, a new tool showed up on uh, the open source scene. That's Org Rome. That is an extra tool based on org uh, syntax and org files, but it has a different approach. Org mode is uh, your task management engine. But if you have read uh, David Allen's book, he says, OK, you have to distinguish between task and between reference material. So you get some information that you say, OK, not really a task, not really actionable, but nice to know. So let me put it in some notes. And org roam is exactly that missing piece. Uh, you create nodes that are just small org files. And they will be entered into a database. And so you can have a Zettelkasten approach to your nodes. I don't know if you know the Zettelkasten system. There is a name that is called Niklas Luhmann that was a great uh, person that even got a profession uh, in a university because he had the Zettelkasten system. And there's a good book that I can recommend about this. This is called uh, Taking Smart Notes from Sönke Ahrens that describes the Zettelkasten system. And th the idea is you write down a note, and then you connect it with other notes. So in the org Rome user interface, you have a nice web interface. You see all your information nodes, and you see the links in between them. And those links, they give you new insights. So, so you can say, hey, this topic is also showing up here, and so on. So, so you really have a sort of knowledge management system. I can really recommend to use that. OK, let's come to the end. Links and information. If you want to uh, go to the orgmode website, it's uh, www.orgmode.org. If you want to see my original YouTube tutorials from 2016, there's a watch list on YouTube that is still used today. I, I once a week, I get the comment from a YouTuber that says, oh, thanks for that, and this is great, and so on. Uh, then I lost my job in 2020. I was laid off, but it's not a problem because they paid me a lot of compensation. But I have plenty of time then. And I said, OK, let me just try out if I record the videos again with the knowledge of 2020. And maybe I did a book as well. 
about that and I said I put it on Udemy and I sell it as a course. So there's a Udemy course that is called Getting Yourself Organized with Org Mode. And for this conference, I created coupon codes. So usually the tr uh, course uh, will cost 20 euro 99, but if you subscribe or uh, enroll until June 20th, the first 100 people that enroll to the course will get it for free with the code OSC2022. And yeah, if you want to contact me, use my private email address, reiner at kunikhornstetten.de. I'm always eager to uh, answer questions about org mode because this is really a passion project for me because it makes my life really easier. And I have to tell you, if, if you live a reasonable life and a, a meaningful life, that's good. I just finished a book from Johan Hari about uh, Lost Connection is the title, and it's about depression. And he said uh, science shows that people that think they don't have a meaningful life, they tend much more to have depressions than people that have a meaningful life. So org mode helps me to have a meaningful life so I can escape the depressions. So that's it from me. Thank you for your interest. I hope you enjoyed the talk. I will be still around for a while before I have to catch my train home, but I'm here for questions. Any questions now or I don't see any, you are all, ah, one is winking, okay. Can we have a microphone for the people that have questions? Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, do you know if there are any integrations with the systems that ZUSA and OpenZUSA use, like Progress, so that you can see in your agenda Oh, uh, I have a not, deadline. Not, not yet, um, but because I, 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 I'm, I'm not, um, how to say, let, let's, let's say like this, that the thing is you have always to, to uh, reflect that uh, this is personal management system. And Progress, OpenSUSE, Org, or whatever is um, Goobware, collabor collaboration. But uh, for me, this is just the personal stuff, uh, but I know there are all uh, modules around that at least connect to Jira somehow, so that you can reflect uh, tasks from Jira in the org mode. Uh, I can also import uh, calendar data from Google Calendar, for example. So my, my Google Calendar is on my smartphone. I have all it always with me, but in my agenda views, I will see all the dates and appointments that I have in my Google Calendar. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. So there was another question. It's not a question, just a comment. Uh, I don't want to start any holy wars, but if you use proper text editor, there is also a plugin doing org mode for NeoVim and uh, Vim, and the one for NeoVim is really good. So okay. highly suggest it. You don't have to switch. Okay. So any more questions, then let's say thank you for the interest and hope you enjoyed it.